Oh, today's video is brought to you by your friends over at Manscaped. 10 million men worldwide, trust them. And why are we talking about them this month? Well, because it's spring cleaning session. It's spring, ladies and gentlemen. So it's time for you to groom your carpets and drapes and everything. And I'm not talking about your house crazy. I'm talking about down there. <laughs> Ah. See, ladies and gentlemen, with the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, you get access to the Lawnmower 5.0. I don't leave my home without this, okay? You never know when you need to groom yourself out in the wild. But of course, they've taken precision to a whole new level. You're talking about their next generation dual skin safe blade heads, which are accompanied with an upgraded trimmer blade and an interchangeable foil blade. And of course, if you're wondering, whoa, how do I stick this in my nose? You don't. I gotta mention that for legal reasons. You use the Weed Whacker 2.0, which also comes with a 7,000 RPM motor and a 360 degree rotary dual blade system to tackle any pesky nose and ear hair imaginable. And it's also waterproof, cordless, and rechargeable. After your grooming sessions, you've also got the crop soother and crop preserver to basically keep you cool, comfortable morning to night. And you know what? What if I told you you got some gifts? You got the Boxers 2.0, which are not like your regular boxers. Mm -mm. These are designed for ultimate comfort and style in mind. Of course, you've also got the Shed 2.0 bag, which of course comes with water resistant fabric and a leak proof zipper. Head on over to manscaped.com. Get your hands on the Performance Package 5.0. Use our code SOG and get 20% off and free international shipping in those two free gifts. That said, let's go to the video. Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and it's been a year since I made a video regarding an image that I was trying to find on the internet, a piece of internet lost media. Now, as you all know, one of my, well, some of you know, one of my starting points on the entire YouTube journey was video game creepypastas. I made videos about Pokemon Creepy Black, I made videos about Sonic.exe, and lo and behold, I even ventured into normal, mainstream creepy stories known as Jeff the Killer. Now, the Jeff the Killer story is one that uh, honestly isn't that incredible in of itself. It's more of a meme these days. It is quite possibly one of the most famous internet creepypastas at the time, and it was about a whole story regarding a 13-year-old kid who moves to a new neighborhood, and there are three bullies, and effectively, uh, you fight back against the bullies, you end up having your face completely destroyed, and this is the face in question. Now, instead of the actual story here, what's most important is this image basically floated around the internet for years. And, uh, you know, for a while everyone was like, eh, it's just an internet creepypasta image. But obviously, people wanted to know the actual image behind this. What was the actual initial negative? Where was the actual photo that this was photoshopped from? Now what's happened over here is a group known as r slash original JTK image was formed that has nothing to do with this creepypasta, but in fact finding this original negative, this image that was attached to the creepypasta. And it's gotten to a point where image analysis and actual exploration of Chan boards from the old internet have basically taken these people to the ends of the earth to find out the original negative of this image. And to this day, this spans a multi-year-long search for an image that has not been found. An image that may be over two decades old, on a part of the internet that may be entirely scrubbed at this point. This might be a piece of lost media that might forever remain actual lost media. So today I want to revisit the entire story of this hunt and kind of see the possible leads as of today as researched by the community and uh, just see if there's any actual chance this thing could actually materialize. Let's go! So to bring you guys back to the original like sub, this sub over here is the original JTK image. Now a year ago I actually covered this and these are people who want to find the original unedited Jeff the Killer image. No, this has absolutely nothing to do with the cringy creepypasta. I'm glad we all can agree on that, but it has all about trying to find a piece of actual lost media. Now, of course, uh, you know, the actual community behind here was trying to find the actual original post. And for the most part, I would say that it's a bit of a deader uh, actual Reddit than I found before. At this point, we've got tier lists of what could appear to be actual Jeff the Killer images. To this day, as I'm making this video, the actual image has not been found. But there have been a few leads that are worth looking into. Now to summarize, the Jeff the Killer hunt has taken an, an intense amount of image analysis that basically has given these people enough data to start actually seeking information on old school uh, image boards. 
Now, in the original case over here, you can see that Jeff the Killer, which again, this is the original documentation that regards the actual search for this character, there are two images, JTK1 and JTK2. JTK1, also known as Cute Jeff, and JTK2 is the more traditional creepypasta image that we all know uh, from the actual scary stories on the internet. And of course, the actual image analysis over here is quite insane. Obviously, these people have dug through almost every bit of data they can in order to source as much information needed so that they can go and actually search for this on Japanese image boards. So alongside having a language barrier, there is also a situation where you have to go to these super old boards and actually look for data and look for information uh, that probably doesn't exist anymore. So nine months ago, an individual had found the third oldest JTK1 image repost, which was discovered by Juvental. So of course, on 501.gamushara.net, photo occult data, hello.jpg, they ended up apparently finding the original JTK1 image. So again, that cute Jeff right over there. Not archived, unfortunately, but with the example referring to Oda Q, and the specific stuff about the image, the admins investigators on Discord confirm it is a JTK1 repo. So again, that's ObaQ in comparison. And of course, they actually did link to a bunch of threads that they found. But unfortunately, the problem with some of these threads is they're hosted on a site known as 5CH, which also known as 2Channel, is actually a Japanese image board uh, that is still very active to this day. You can go to it right now. This is 5CH.net, and of course you can see that it is Probably, it's, I think it's visited by like 10 million users monthly. And of course, they're constantly posting about stuff here all the time. It's, it's basically 4chan for that side of the world. And of course, they've got their actual boards over here too. So you can read up about gambling, idol culture, net game, net relationships, isolation, the wilderness. Or even if you wanted to talk about earthquakes, which are a serious thing in Japan, you've got it right over here. Pink Chan is the adult version, as you can imagine. So uh, again, for YouTube safety guidelines sake, we're not even entering anywhere close to the pink side of the internet. Now, what's also insane about this is the link they're mentioning, hello.jpg, has a bit of a link to something else on the internet known as Goat C, which uh, basically, if you don't know what Goat C is, I'm not even gonna explain to you. It's actually what it is, it's just a stretched anus, okay? It's literally a dude stretching their butthole. And of course, what do you think that image was called? Hello.jpg. Yeah, I wanted to mention it because I thought it was a funny coincidence, but let's dive deeper. But of course, seven days ago, a pretty massive actual discovery was made, all right? A week ago, it turns out that after all these years, the first instance of JTK1 has been found on 2chan Futaba in early 2007. This is an add-on to my previous post about the JTK1 fake GIF instance via here. Ignore if you've seen it. So again, just to see it real quickly, 21 days ago, early 2007 JTK1 repost was found via the help of a late 2010 JTK1 repost. It's literally inception here, okay? In late 2006, a certain school photo would start associating with JTK1, which currently the oldest instance of this format is 30th November 2006 via 5chan or 2channel as, uh, as we've shown earlier. So again, this school image, and again, this led to this cute Jeff image right here. If you did click on this link, you may notice that the file extension ends with JPEG. This is unusual, as you can clearly see the image changed to JTK1. This worked in advance for JTK1 to spread due to users wanting to find out how this is possible while also being greeted with a scare from JTK1. So this image format spread like wildfire. But if you want to create this format, all you have to do is make a GIF and change the file extension to JPEG. Oh, look at that, dude. So see how this is a JPEG right over here? If we reload, you can see that it's got a, you know, just a, just a school image, right? These kids are just, you know, literally existing. But of course, because it's a GIF, at some point it's going to switch to Jeff the Killer as it's done right over here. That's generally how it happens. So going to the Wayback Machine and changing 2CH to 5CH showed this actual thread, which took us right over here. To Hato5CH.net, test, read CGI news, uh, 129, and of course, this is the actual post right over here. So again, by translating it to English, uh, you can find out that this is, life ends when private sex images and videos go online, right? Why do you take such a picture? But of course, this thread doesn't exist for no reason. Poster 257 actually gives a link to that specific image that we just saw. So yeah, it's, it's a weird rabbit hole to actually go down into. Then they went down to deathnote.biz, 
And at this moment in time, I highly recommend anybody that's going down this rabbit hole to not jump. It's animated images that could absolutely get you a YouTube community guideline strike and maybe get the FBI showing up to your house. Uh, I'm not entirely sure there. But anyways, to go back to the post that we were originally looking at over here, uh, today marks the first instance of the known JTK1 appearing on Futuba. This is pretty big news as all current analysis suggests that JTK1 and JTK2 first appeared on Futuba, then spread from there. Since the search has began, there has been effort to find at least one instance appearing to no avail. Futuba is terribly archived and known for this issue back then as the culture was different for archiving back then, unlike 5CH2 channel. As of now, we can only go through mirrored versions of 5CH archives due to a DDoS attack that's happened last year in October. So I had to go through a website called Mimizun, which is a mirror archive website. And Mimizun looks uh, something like this. So obviously it's designed, from what I understand, mostly like the 4chan uh, archives, right? Where you can look up like old thread numbers and whatnot. Very useful when it came to the 4chan synchronicity video I made. And if you haven't watched that, absolutely check it out. It's a banger. But again, to go back over here, 5CH would have these image explanation threads for Anons who were too afraid to see what the image was. We can use that to our advantage to what appraiser saw in the image and describe the image for us, which is how the third oldest instance of the image was found. So yeah, what's basically been happening is obviously the community has been digging even further and further back as much as they can. It's almost as if you get way too close but for every step you take, it often seems like the destination just keeps going further and further. And I think the realization that finding an image like this on poorly archived internet websites is slowly gonna sink in as a near impossibility at this point. It already is being searched for years. And unfortunately the results, it seems like you get just so close, but yet you're so far. So where the actual like thing leads to is one of the big leads that came up at least nine months ago. And this is a lead from my understanding that hasn't been debunked yet. So for instance, clarification about the Mariko lead, the woman who is likely to be Jeff. And this is what I hadn't expected in the situation. All right, because this story takes quite a bit of a dark turn. So the following passage comes from the official search investigation document, which again is right here. So this is, again, a document that you can't access because apparently it's the violation of TOS. Uh, first time I've ever seen that on Google, that's interesting. Possibly the most convincing lead that has been discovered thus far would have to be the Mariko lead. On April 28, 2023, Eat Raw Skin discovered a woman on Japanese image board, Gazo Box. For anybody wondering what Gazo Box is, uh, I tried accessing it, it just leads to a white blank page. So for instance, gazobox.com doesn't actually lead to anywhere. I mean, there is a Cloudflare verification, but it doesn't actually lead to anything uh, other than this white page. But apparently it is an actual image board. So again, if that like, I guess if that answers the question, sure. But if you go to the Wayback Machine now, instead of a white skin, it is literally just an image board website from the Japanese side. So here you got a, you got a, you got a doge at a cigarette shop. All right, you know, just, just Yakuza thing, so to speak. But <clears throat> to go in further, the name of Mariko, the facial similarities between the subject of the white powder edits, so the original Jeff uh, face with the entire white skin, if you will, and the newly discovered lead, such as the hairline and mouth, were quite intriguing as they were unparalleled compared to previous ones that had been discovered. Multiple key points of interest were her reputation as a net idol and consistent harassment from multiple people which are recurring themes in previous finds. All this information is stemmed from an exhaustive two-month search conducted by her search team, which are credited in the last paragraph of this section. So again, the actual documentation for anybody that's looking, it's a 21-page document by for people looking into the Mariko lead. And of course, these are four individuals that, again, have done the primary research in this situation. So the story gets even wilder over here because what had happened was Mariko uh, was a net idol, and they also found out that her InfoSeek page, bullying comments from many members, and the fact that she had a boyfriend named Suza Kumaru, who further was referred to as Suza in this document, Suza, apart from having his own page on different websites, used to promote Mariko's site around the internet. Weirdly enough, it was discussed by many channers on threats found by Milk, Prime, and Eat Raw Skin how unstable their relationship seemed to be as well as how the Sousa person posted pictures of Mariko. 
It is strongly believed that Sousa created the page for Mariko, but it's not clear whether or not Mariko consented to the page. If she did consent to the page being created, there's a possibility that Sousa hid the final product and people's reactions to it. Sousa eventually took the pages down on May 20th, 2004, due to a backlash from the 2CH users claiming that the manner in which Mariko's photos were posted and captions comments alongside it had escalated to a human rights violation level. Insane, man. As the website was spammed over more and more threads, it is believed a passing user saved either a photo or video file from the myriad of Mariko Media Sousa had posted. And at some point, this is the file that was turned into the Jeff the Killer 2 image, the creepy face. There's a gap of around 14 months, May 2004 to July 2005, between the takedown of most of Mariko's content from Sousa's page and the earliest found instance of Jeff the Killer. This is the time period that this research is focused on. So the actual first image that was located over here was this one right over here. This is Mariko. And of course you can see kind of the face almost matches too. Uh, well, at least the angle of the face right over here as well. And of course, you know, she, she wasn't warranted any form of harassment. She seems like a decent enough person. Uh, but of course the actual image comparison over here was obviously took the angle of the face. Uh, they looked at the facial uh, shape was kind of the same. So this point in the cheek and over here was roughly the same image, same gums and mole. And of course the actual hair parting. So this little line over here, and I know it might be a little too hard to tell if I'm zoomed in that much. Sure, shoulder placement looks similar. And of course the mouth, while slightly exaggerated over here from what it seems to Photoshopping, uh, seems like it might actually be the same exact image. So this is as close as anybody is going to get. And of course, looking into her image right now, when they put it into PyMize, the paid results ended up leading back to another image all the way here. And of course, this is where they started to look into multiple blogs that they could find all related to this Mariko image. I mean, it would all just literally lead to like the most old school Japanese websites that anybody could find over here. So here's like Mariko with her eyes sort of crossed out. There's just an image of Mariko right there. And then of course, this is like really vintage old school BBS. Again, it's just literally images of this one person who is floating around on old school Japanese media websites. So throughout actually searching for more and more images, they found out that there was more stuff of Mariko that was effectively floating around. And uh, yeah, it all came out from an InfoSeek page that apparently belonged to an ex-boyfriend allegedly known as Souza. Now it leads to a, a, a name here and I'm just gonna blur the name out, but it, the, of course the actual name over here, the guy is a man age is 21 right now, based in 2001. This is way back in the day, Jesus Christ. Uh, of course, personality basically suspicious. And of course, hobbies are karaoke, bowling, painting, special skill, I can't say it. Uh, what does that even mean? Favorite food, octopus, pasta, and pear. I hate food like tomatoes, eggplants. Man, don't bring this guy to Italy, Jesus Christ. Favorite games, minor things such as wizardry and GEO. I hate games, a game that is too easy. Ah, typical Dark Souls lover I see, huh? And of course, this is where people had started to get actual photos of this individual by looking down and basically grabbing whatever information they could find off of these old school pages. So while some of these pages aren't really active all that much, uh, and there's way back machines, way back, uh, way back pings that may exist, uh, the link that they made to uh, Sousa in the situation was from some of these old boards right over here. And of course they link in this document that he was involved with Mariko in some way, a suspected boyfriend who mistreated and exploited her on the internet. And that's where a whole bunch of extra, uh, you know, chans and a whole bunch of extra threads were basically dug up in relation to what appeared to be Mariko and Sousa. And at this point, the entire story that could be pieced together as well as it could be, was the fact that the entire board found it really creepy how this girl Mariko's image was basically being spread around and the harassment that basically arose from it basically created a schism in the online community over there. People did not consider it to be good. And at this moment in time, a mass almost deletion or reporting started to happen, which is basically at this point, the files and the images were slowly being removed and destroyed from the internet. Okay, so to link everyone back over here, the reason why Suzo was involved in the situation, and this is a surviving page 
uh, from 2004, okay? A 2004 post, May 21st. An actual bystander by the name of Nin posted, shocking diet diary discovery. I found a diet page. So its name is Mariko's Room. Now to understand, the entire post of this was apparently made by the account Souza. In one of the original posts, it seems, this is what it apparently had at least close to look like. So ezz.jp Suzaku, so Souza. And they were posting images of Mariko over here, right? Again, her diet diary, if you will, too, her diet journey. Exactly what a lump. Who is it? What do you want to do? It's too amazing. I feel it. Dieters, please take a look. So the above site was almost closed due to much access, such as via 2CH, when it was shared on one of the largest Chan boards uh, there at the time. A conversation with an individual known as Tatsuhiro, who writes, Wow, Tatsuhiro had parent statements, it's so thick. I have more itchy. Muffy. Inari. It's a shame. Remarks by, well, I'm tired. And of course, they link to the InfoSeek page, which is Mariko's, uh, you know, diet journey. Mariko's room remarks by, well, I'm tired from worship. Uh, Tatsu at parent statement naked. Image or no, too much security. Uh, and then, of course, well, here it's disappearing now. It was until about yesterday. And uh, it's, a, it's a confusing bit of stuff to read. Again, Google Translate really doesn't help uh, out much in this situation. Uh, just because there are going to be things that are missed. So throughout all of this, to try to piece a story together, the Jeff the Killer community that was hunting this image down has started to use keywords like Mariko, Mariko's Room, Human Rights Violations, who's a Kamaru, the actual link to the, uh, you know, the diet journey, if you will, too. Suza HP InfoSeek, Tamak HP InfoSeek, Ochi, Pain Personal Page, Murderous Ugly, Maririn, and Maribu Maripu. So people have started to actually look through a whole bunch of these like actual like links to try to find any form of evidence in whatever archive they could find of any chain board just to find the original image. And this is where the theory kind of leads to, right? So the theory here says the earliest documented mention of Mariko on the World Wide Web dates back to April 14, 2004 on a Futaba thread. Images and videos of her documented on an InfoSeek page operated by her boyfriend, Suza Kamaru, acted as a diet diary of Mariko attempting to lose weight. Suza Kamaru promoted URLs on it to various websites. The peak of harassment guided towards her was in a three-day period between May 20th and 22. Multiple threads on 5CH and BBS Pink referred to her as the internet net idol that would surpass Sonoko and Terumi. Later on, a consensus was established between members on multiple image boards, basically accusing Souza of having this really unhealthy relationship with Mariko and why they were wondering if she even consented to some of these images being released of her. And it's completely unclear if that was even actually there. Nobody knows if he just posted images of her on the internet. Yes, even if they weren't, uh, you know, uh, adult in nature, it's still really creepy to just post images of your significant other or friends on the internet without asking them first. That's just a general understanding. Hell, posting images of anybody without their consent is just weird, especially if they're connected to you in this manner, allegedly. So what happened was an attempt to erase Mariko's presence on the web and Suza Kamaru also happened around May 20th of that same year. So due to overwhelming negative reception because people were wondering, oh my God, did she consent to it? This is where the term human rights violation came out of, right? The translation, if you will. So what they did was they asked people to report the pages. And even if Mariko had approved with it, the amount of people were making so many reports that at some point, a lot of this, a lot of these images were being removed. Now to understand the internet back then was not the internet of today's day and age. You could post something embarrassing online right now. And within a minute, somebody will probably grab it, put it on an archive site somewhere. And once you post cringe, once you post something you don't want posted, it will unfortunately stay on the internet, whether you like it or not. Back then on the internet, because these sites were so, I guess you could say decentralized, they were so new, and uh, again, there wasn't a whole lot of archival culture even, right? There wasn't like big image drops or cloud services where you could yoink something off the internet, throw it up onto a Dropbox and effectively forget about it. This kind, these kind of things could effectively just disappear. So the general idea, the investigation members, was that the image used for white powder edits was taken from a video recorded by Sousa about Mariko 
especially since there are like three videos of her, with two being considered disturbing due to the way she looked in them, the possible reason why material of her is so hard to come by was because of a rare instance of actual Chan users coming together and making sure that images of her couldn't be used. In some capacity, the internet actually gathered its collective humanity and tried to stop the harassment of one individual. As rare as that may sound to some people, the internet tried to do something that is objectively good. Now, at the end of the day, this is just a theory. And of course, it's probably the most plausible theory about this image. And it's one of the things where I guess I can safely kind of say is, I don't think the original video, the original negative is ever going to be found. Just because of the fact that I think the Jeff the Killer situation is pretty much done. This is unfortunately an image from a time that has long been gone. And honestly, considering this new context that I now know about the situation, I really don't even want to see the original video anymore. If it meant that this person was unfortunately harassed in any way, or you know their life was given some negative attention, then it's not worth really, in my opinion, at least for me personally, going down and looking into. But because of how old this situation is, I don't personally believe that we're ever going to come across the actual image as it is. Jeff the Killer is one of those stories where, yeah, the creepypasta is one thing, the actual image has taken a life of its own. And trying to trace it down has basically taken the internet uh, years to even come to this point that we're at right now. Do I think that we can progress further from here? I don't know. I think if the original files are basically gone and unarchived, this might actually be lost media that will forever remain actual lost media. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.